Do you want to know how to measure any object using computer vision with a high accuracy? Then this video is for you. Hi, welcome to this new video. We're now going to see how to measure the size of any object using just a webcam. Here I have a Logitech webcam. You can use any webcam you want and we're going to get a very high accuracy, close to millimeters precision with a very simple setup using Python and OpenCV. Where can this be used? Of course, this can be used anywhere you need to measure objects in real time without needing on taking any meters or ruler. I will give you different setups where you can apply this. For example, in any industrial setting where you need to measure objects in real time, you can place a camera somewhere here. So let's say here there, you can place a camera and in real time, all the objects that are passing below will be measured in size. Here we have a more clear example where you, we can get the measurements of the object. For example, we need always to place the camera on top so that it can see properly the size, the, the objects from the top. Of course, if you want to see the size, the size from the top, for example, this, this, or the full area that's covered, you place the camera here on top just a simple camera. If you want to see the height or the size, the width of the object, you can place the camera somewhere here looking from the side. And it can be used for any type of product. For, for example, here we have potatoes and in real time, if we place a camera, we place the camera here on top close to where we have the light, we place a camera here and we can check the size of the potatoes in real time. So when they're passing, our software will analyze the size of each product in real time and you can do a lot of things. You can stop the production, you can do any automations related to what you detected with the computer vision system. This is another example with the egg. You can get the size of each single egg and this can be done in real time with the system. So again, the camera will be placed somewhere on top here and you can get this. You can get the average size of the eggs. Of course, you can do a much more in-depth analysis, not only the size, you can get like the color, you can get how dirty they are and so on. But now in this, we're going to focus only on the measurements. Now that I gave you a perspective on where you can use this, let's see how to build the system from scratch using Python and OpenCV. Let's go. Before we go further with the lesson, I want to let you know that everything that I'm sharing with you today, like source code and more in-depth explanation of each single step will be inside the AI Vision Academy. I'm going to put the link down below in the description. Here is how you ask help for your project. And now let's start building our project. First thing, you need to prepare your setup. So let's say that we want to measure all the objects that we have right here around this area. And from this object, of course, we can take only two dimensions. We can take the width like this, and we can take the height, of course, it's depending on the perspective, like one can be width or height, or we can reverse that. But anyway, two dimensions, we cannot get the depth. Why we cannot get the depth? Because we're using a simple webcam. So this is the webcam that we have here. We cannot get the depth because for that, we need some more advanced camera, for example, that cameras like this one, that's for another video. So we can get to dimensions. So for this, you need to place the webcam on top and it must be perpendicular to the ground like this. To have a precise measurement, it must be perpendicular to the ground. So you need to do this setup. It's very simple. You can do this at home anywhere. And now let's start with the coding. I will be very quick. So I will write some part from scratch and then some part I will just put it and copy paste it and explain you general what it does. Otherwise this lesson will take two hours and we want just to understand the concept here. So we need the library OpenCV, so CV2. And then what we need, we need to get the frame in real time from the camera. So we create a capture object, CV2.video capture. And then zero, zero to load the first webcam. If you have multiple webcams, you need to change this with a different index, one, two, and so on. Now let's get the frames. Now with this, we're getting the frame in real time from the camera. Let's show the frame. Let's release the camera. So when we're done with the job, we release the camera and then we close everything. Now this is taking in real time everything that's below. Now we go to the first concept. The first concept is we need to be able to measure the distance of any points in this image. What we do, we take, we create a mouse event function so that when we click, we can get the point and then we calculate the distance of the point in pixels. Let's do that. Now let's create a function so that we can take the click with the mouse. 
So what I'm doing right now with this function is that we want to be able to click with the mouse and we take the position of the point in the screen. So if the event is the mouse click, the left mouse, the L CV2 dot L event L button down. So when we press the left button of the mouse, we want to store the points. So points dot append and we're going to add X and Y. We draw them on the screen. So for point in points, then CV2 dot we want a circle for each point that we are storing there. So with this function, we draw the circle and then let's test this. So wherever we click, you see that we are drawing a point. Now, uh, we don't need many points. We need just two points and we want to be able to measure the distance between two points. So we need to do two things. We need to avoid that this function s stores more points that we need. So if we have two, we're going to reset the number of points that we have. If the length of points is two when we click, then in that case, we're going to restore this. So points will start from an empty array, so we don't have more. What else do we want to do? We want now to measure the distance from these two points. And for this, we have the geometrical formula to measure the distance between two points. Measure. So this is going to be very simple. As you see, it's very intuitive that we're not doing any, any hard things or any magic here. So distance. And of course, let's measure the distance only when we have two points, otherwise we will get an error. So if the length of the points is two, in this case, we can get the distance. We have a module, import math module in Python that will allow us to do this very simply, math.hypot. And here we put the X of the two different points. So let's get point one, PT1, is from points is the first one that we have in the array pt2 is the second point so points one right here and now we can get the distance so we have x2 minus x1 so x2 is from point 2 pt2 zero is the x of course in the points we have two coordinates x and y so let's take the first value is the x from point 2 and then minus pt1 in this one is the x of uh, the zero, which is the first element. We don't need to do this with so many parentheses. And then with this formula, this will give us the distance between two points. We say x2 minus x1 and then y2 minus y1. So point two, the y, so this is the second values minus point one, one. As we have the distance, let's show the distance. So the int of the distance. So let's show just a number without long number after the comma. So let's put int and we show the distance right here. Let's choose the font, the size of the text, let's say 2.5 color, let's make it red. Oh, let's now test everything. So we put a point, nothing happens. We put a second point and here we have the distance. So the distance from this two point is 265 pixels and it's important to know that it's pixels because then it's not a real distance yet it's of course some distance that we have between the screen so let's put them closer one and two now you see 175 if we put them further you see 584 so this is now working so with the distance between two points this is the first distance between two points what is the second step at the second step we need to calibrate, we need to find a ratio from pixel to centimeters. How do we do this? It's very simple. So we take a ruler or a meter. So I have now the meter and then we need to associate the centimeters to the pixel. So what we do, we put the meter. Now it's not so visible. I've just increased the size so it's, it's very well visible. Now I have this meter and I can read, I know that this red here, it's 20 centimeters. Here we have 30, here we have 10. We need to calibrate that. We can do this uh, very simply. We can say we click on zero and then we click, for example, on 10. And we know that 10 centimeters correspond to 137 pixels. So we find the ratio. Here we create a ratio value, which is the ratio pixels 
to CM ratio, we divide 10 with 137. 10 divided 137. So each time we get the pixel, we can convert this. Here we have the ratio. How do we get the size now? We go on where we are displaying the distance and now let's get distance to centimeter distance to cm so each time we get the distance in pixels so this here cm let's say this distance pixels to to have just more clear from the code the distance in centimeters is it's equals to the ratio multiplied with the distance in pixel as simple as that so now in real time let's show this we show distance centimeter and then let's also add right here cm also i want to okay now we will keep integer but of course integer it's going to remove all the dots so it's less precise but later we can improve that and let's now run this one to prove that everything is working correctly and we have also the meters to double check so that we are sure that we are talking about real measurements and not just uh, random numbers uh, let's now test everything so let me uh, put here, we click here, and then we click on the 10, and we have 10 centimeters. You see it's quite accurate already. So let's start from zero to 20. We have 20 centimeters, uh, zero to 30, it's like just by default 29. Okay, the, there might be some improvement with the precision we can do. Let's see the phone. The phone is around 15 or 16 centimeters, if I'm not wrong, 15. Uh, here it's maybe 8 or 7. And already it's working. So already with the mouse click, we're getting the measurements in real time and it's pretty accurate already. The next step will be to show you what's the process to automate this so that it detects the objects and the measurement it's in real time. And at the end, I will give you some tips for the accuracy. Now to do this, we need a system that automatically detects the objects. So let's focus only on these two objects. We have the scissors and then we have the second, the phone. But this of course can be on any object that we have there. We have the phone. We want a system that automatically detects them and then that gives us the length of the two axes here and this one. So we have the height and then the width and the same for this one. And this size right here. What's the solution here? The first uh, intuitive solution that you might think of is object detection. So what is object detection? Object, object detection will detect a bounding box and surround the objects like this. And you'll see already that there is some problem with object detection. Unless the objects are perfectly uh, parallel to the camera, then uh, like for example, the scissors here, we can uh, with the object detection and the bounding box, we can accurately get these two sizes, but not with the phone. You see the phone is a bit tilted so like the, uh, the size that we would get with object detection are not correct. So we have both the height and the width, which are longer because the object is tilted. So in this case, we need another thing, which is having oriented bounding boxes, which is something like this. So we'll be to get the bounding box of the objects, but oriented. So with the rotation. How can we do this? There is some algorithms that already can detect oriented bounding box, but the most common is object segmentation. So we can get the exact segmentation of all the objects. The exact segmentation means detect the objects, but also exactly the accuracy have a mask, a polygon surrounding the object. So once we get the segmentation with OpenCV, we can extract the oriented bounding box. So I'm, I'm now implementing in this code object segmentation. We'll do this for now some common objects. So we have pre-trained models that by default they will detect 80 different objects. So we can detect the phone, we can detect scissors, person and so on. But of course you can segment any object you want. On the academy I explain all the steps how you can create your model to segment any object, especially if you want to uh, segment and detect the the size of custom objects in any environment. Uh, you see now we have the segmentation in real time. So the project, the software is now detecting the scissors and the cell phone. Also the person, somewhere I put the hand is detect the hand and we have the exact polygon surrounding the object. Now, what do we have to do? We take the polygon, 
with the OpenCV function, we convert this into a bounding box, we get the axis, and then we get the dimension. We get the dimension in pixel, we convert them into centimeters, and we are done. Very simple. We have an OpenCV function, which is cv2.min rect, which takes the segment, so the polygon surrounding the object, converts that into a rotated rectangle. For that rect, we have the angle, so we know the rotation, and then we know the size. So already this one is giving us the two different sizes, the width and the height of the rotated object. So we take size one, size two, we convert size one and size two into centimeters. So we take the size and we multiply it with the ratio and then let's display everything. And now we have in real time the detection of the sizes. You see we have the two different axes, 16.12 centimeters, 8.3. So we have pretty accurate detection in real time. We can move the objects. So even if we move the objects, the detection is happening. So if you have a conveyor belt, some production, this can happen in real time, even if you have a very fast production. So there are no limits, like if you have the right hardware to do any detection in real time. I hope that you like this video and that you got a lot of useful information. I will be bringing a lot of projects, practical projects that you can build from scratch. If you have any questions about this, about the application, please post them in the comment below. If you want to see more, just subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.